Gauss's law for magnetic fields. When it comes to magnetic fields, there is no such thing as magnetic charge. So this has a very dramatic implication on Gauss's law if written for magnetic fields and has some important implications. So similar to the electric fields, we will derive Gauss's law for magnetic fields in integral form, and then from that derive the differential form. There is no such thing as a magnetic charge. And we saw for electric fields, the electric field started and ended on the charges. Well, if there's no such thing as magnetic charge, then magnetic fields can't have a beginning or an end, yet they exist. So how can that be? Well, the only way that that can be is if the magnetic field forms loops. And the loops do not have to be perfectly circular. They can be of any shape but they have to start and end at the same point, which really means there is no beginning or an end because it's forming a continuous loop. So that's the big implication of Gauss's law for magnetic fields on the magnetic fields. Gauss's law for magnetic fields says if we integrate the flux, the magnetic flux around some closed surface, we should get total enclosed charge. Well, if there is no such thing as magnetic charge, this always has to give us zero. And it may not be obvious why we will always get zero if there truly are magnetic fields and if there is magnetic flux. So let's draw a couple of pictures to try to make this a little bit more intuitive. Here we have a magnetic field forming a loop and we have formed our Gaussian surface well outside of that. So the magnetic field does not penetrate that surface at all. So there is zero flux all the way around. And then the total integral would be zero. That makes sense. But what if that Gaussian surface is cutting through that loop? Let's look at that case. Well, the loop is zero everywhere except two points. However, if we look at the magnetic flux coming in, and the magnetic flux going out, it turns out they're of opposite sign, otherwise equal, same magnitude, but opposite sign, and they end up canceling. And a little bit harder to see when there's more complicated fields, but essentially since the magnetic field is forming loops, the flux still always adds to zero because there'll be just as much positive flux as negative flux. So here we are at Gauss's law for magnetic fields in integral form. Notice there is no volume integral of magnetic charge density. That's because there is no magnetic charge density. So this is Gauss's law for magnetic fields in its entirety, in integral form. Let's write Gauss's law for magnetic fields in differential form. And to do this, we will make use of the divergence theorem. Let's remember quickly what the divergence theorem is. It's a way to convert a surface integral into a volume integral. The surface integral has to be a closed contour surface integral. In other words, that surface has to completely and perfectly enclose a volume. So if we were to integrate the flux around that surface, that has to be the same thing as integrating the divergence throughout the volume enclosed by that surface. So here I've written Gauss's law for magnetic fields, pretending as if there is magnetic charge. So total magnetic charge is the same thing as integrating the flux around some surface or integrating the magnetic charge density throughout a volume. Well, sitting here is a closed contour surface integral where we're integrating flux and the divergence theorem allows us to write that as a volume integral integrating divergence. So we simply replace this one integral with a volume integral integrating the divergence of the magnetic field. Here's where we were from the previous slide. Well, if we have two volume integrals over the same volume and the same differential dV and we get the same answer in the end, it makes sense that they would be integrating the same thing. So in other words, the divergence of the magnetic flux B has to be the same thing as the magnetic charge density. 
Now, since there is no such thing as magnetic charge density, we would set this term to zero, and we would arrive at Gauss's law for magnetic fields in differential form. The divergence of the field is always zero.